Hey guys, we're checking out a brand new one from Rad Power Bikes. This is the Rad Rhino Step Through. It's based on the Rad Rover Step Through from the United States and Canada, but it's for all you European people. And this is the first generation of this bike in the US and in Europe. So it's really cool. It's going to both locations. I also like that it comes in two colors. So we've got this white, sort of a matte finish. And then these are all the black versions over here. So we got the full size Rad Rhino, which is a little bit stiffer, higher standover height, but you'll notice the battery's moved forward versus vertical. This frame has a little bit more flex, but really it's not too bad because they've got this gusset right here. And then this extra support arm, almost like a little top tube, surrounds the battery, offers some good protection. The bikes are just really built tough. And you can even see the frame right here. It looks like there's a a thicker piece of tubing down here and it's it's sort of a rectangle a tall rectangle very nice setup also kind of a satin finish on this i actually like the the black a little bit more myself because all the cables and everything blend in safety wise rad has got you covered they've got reflective sidewall stripes on all their bikes as well as integrated lights you can see that over here i thought i'd focus on the white one because it stands out more gives you an excellent visual footprint from the side but they've also got this light that's on a little riser so it won't get quite so blocked by that fender if you're way down here it goes away but most of the time you're up here or even up here if you're a car so I'm definitely digging that. Very thoughtful. And they've got all these racks and stuff. And whenever you get a rack, including the front rack, they've got a little extender cable so the light will mount to the rack. Now, when you do that, it no longer points where you steer. So that's one trade-off. But I just, this light is pretty cool. You'll notice that it's pretty visible from the side. The older lights, they were like this kind of rectangle. They had two beams. Now they've gone with this light ring and then a lens in the middle that's fairly focused. It actually gives you a pretty good view of where you're going. It's not just a B scene light. It actually helps you see. You've got these aluminum alloy fins on the top. They're connected to the light housing. So they actually dissipate heat like a heat sink. I'm kind of geeking out here, but safety is a big deal for me. Even the mounting point right here, it's gnarled, so it's not supposed to adjust side to side if it gets bumped. It's supposed to be a little bit sturdier. A bit of a complaint. Whenever you're mounting something to the arch of a suspension, it's going to go up and down. It'd be nice if it was mounted up here, but then again, it's already kind of crowded. And if you had stuff in the basket, you know, in the optional insulated bags or whatever, it might block the light. So having it out front like this works pretty well, even with the rack. I think they've done a pretty good job on this. And now they include these plastic fenders, 110 millimeters in width, which is excellent because you want to protect yourself if you're going through some mud and water, which we are doing today. These tires are awesome. They are co-branded Rad Power Bikes by Kenda, the Juggernaut. They've got puncture resistant tire casing, that reflective stripe, and they can be lowered from five to 30 PSI. The lower you go, the better it's gonna perform on soft sand or snow or loamy, kind of leafy, muddy types of terrain. I've actually used a bike just like this in Mexico and I took the tire pressure all the way down to five. I'm a relatively lightweight rider, but I was there with more like you know, taller, heavier individuals. And we did fine. It actually made it through the sand, surprisingly. We were having a blast on the beach. So this really empowers you to go places that you might not otherwise go. You know, you're gonna be able to keep up with your friends easier. You're not gonna get super hot because you've got a little bit of electric assist. So again, 26 by four inch. These are the super fat tires and they've got specific rims with 12 gauge spokes, extra sturdy and a very specific motor that's fat bike. It's made for the kind of the width of this. So the spokes are gonna get that sturdy bracing angle just like you'd want to support the heavier weight of these rims. Now, this bike does weigh like 71 and a half pounds. It'd be nice if these were punched out rims cause that would lighten the bike a bit. It might change the structural integrity. These are supposed to be able to handle people up to 275 pounds and when you consider all the racks including bottle cage bosses up there that's a pretty that's a pretty sizable load you know so maybe this is a strength thing might also be to keep the bike a little bit more affordable 15.99 euros not too bad and they sell these in germany and france and belgium and the netherlands and they're kind of opening up other geographies as well free shipping pretty pretty good setup some of the other like little minor uh, attention to detail right like that's that's the thing I, i'm saying minor because it's like well you can buy these pedals yourself for like 20 bucks but so many e-bikes come with like plastic pedals these are aluminum alloy they're sturdy they've got these grippy nubs then we've got this alloy chain guide so it's a steel chain ring but this alloy guide won't rust it's also going to protect your maybe your skirt or your pants a little bit from touching that dirty chain over time we've got a nice slap guard so you're not going to get grease and stuff on that white frame now, I mentioned the colors. I kind of like the black. I want to like the white, but it's just a little bit 
more matte than than I would like. It gets smudged a little bit easier. It'd be nice if this was a bit more satin, but again, it, it looks beautiful, and you've got your choice on this bike. A lot of their other bikes, they only come in one color. Now we've got this steel derailleur guard, so if the bike tips over or in shipping, if it's banging around, it's going to protect that Shimano Acera derailleur. This is three steps up from the base level in Shimano's group set. Pretty nice. You know, again, for this price point, that's nice. That's an upgrade. And then we've got the freewheel. That's all these cogs right here. There are seven speeds, and it goes from 11 to 34 tooth. That 34 tooth is really big. That's the one you're going to use to get started or to climb. And that's wonderful. I've actually climbed around without pedal assist. Just the bike's been off, and I've been able to do it. You know, yeah, the bike's heavier and stuff, but with the right gear, uh, you go slow, but it's possible. And then the 11 tooth, that's going to help you hit and maintain the 25 kilometer per hour top speed. You could probably go faster than that comfortably, but that's where the motor cuts out because this is a class one electric bicycle. Now you're looking at this, you're like, well, what's this all about? This is twist power assist. It's basically walk mode made easier. So you can twist that. It's going to make the bike go about six kilometers per hour. Same things happen if you held the down arrow. It just helps the bike push along, which is really good if let's say you go down a hill and you don't feel comfortable climbing or maybe there are a lot of people around it's nice to have walk mode but rad power bikes has taken it to another level because this also overrides the five levels of assist and it takes you to the next level basically so we're in one right now i'd be going pretty slow the motor's going to give me 50 watts of power but if i twist that it'll take me all the way up to 250. So it just saves me time from having to go one, two, three, four, five, yeah, all the way to the top, right? It just, it just jumps me right up there. So I like that. You do have to be pedaling. This thing uses a 12 magnet cadence sensor. You can see it right down there. It's like this disc and there's a little reader. On the Rad Runner, which is the kind of their mini bike, it's a, it's a little bit more affordable than this. That one has a sealed cadence sensor, which is on this side. And I, I kind of prefer that, but this one's high resolution. It's working just fine. We've got excellent kickstand placement here. Stays clear of the left crank arm. And the kickstand is not banging into that disc brake. See, it's nice that it's got enough clearance. That's something I think about when I look at these a lot because it's easy to kind of bend this and then it'll start making noises when you ride. This is a planetary geared 250 watt hub motor. It's black. It's got the black spokes and everything. Looks really nice. I think it might be similar hardware as we see in other jurisdictions, but they've kind of clocked it down a little bit. Uh, it, it's firmware integrated. You can't override it or anything. And, and that's because they're trying to comply with the laws in Europe, but it's a very capable motor. I, I think this thing will be very durable and probably more efficient because it's not peaking out at those higher levels like we see in North America, which means you're going to get better range, like 30 to 50 miles, depending on how you ride. Now, there is a little torque arm right there kind of left over from the higher powered rad power bikes and that keeps this axle from chewing into the frame this is an aluminum alloy frame right and as power is being exerted by this motor having that torque arm just keeps it solid which is really nice almost overkill same thing with the disc brakes here these are 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes we got four finger levers so you can really grab that and kind of you know bear down and make sure you're stopping and whenever you're braking there's a second wire here that sends a signal to that controller and says, hey, turn the motor off. I don't need any more power right now. It's a great override. And it's important to have that on a cadence sensing bike because, you know, there's a little bit of a delay sometimes, or maybe your, your feet are moving just a little bit. These override. So it's a great safety. And there's one other feature that they offer. If we hold the mode button here for a second, press up and mode. We got the, the lighting. So you can see this, the L, it's kind of a glowing LCD. There's the rear light. And there it is, brake light activation. I love that. So between the reflective tires and the rear light and everything, they've just done a great job. So other things, let's see. Got the suspension fork. It's got compression adjust, right? All the way to lockout. So let's say you're on a smooth section of road and you don't want to lose energy or you don't want that bobby feeling, you can lock this out. And it's got preload. So you can preload the spring if you've got like a heavier load out front on a rack or you're just a heavier person and that way you're not using up the travel, 100 millimeters of travel, just kind of wasting it going up and down. It's, it's nice. It's a pretty nice fork considering still trying to be a little bit more affordable. It's not an air fork. It's not like super high end. It gets the job done. And then back to that battery pack, just good positioning. It's got a little LED charge level reader on it. You can charge it on or off the frame. You might need to take the saddle off or twist it when you remove the battery because otherwise it could get in the way. And this is the European charger. It's the same one they use in North America. Pretty lightweight, weighs roughly 1.1 to 1.5 pounds, depending 
on the additional cable you've got. So they have C13, Type G, Type F. And since they sell this all over the place in Germany, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, France, Belgium, uh, it's really cool that they were thoughtful about this. And I only have two of the plugs here, uh, but it's, it's kind of neat to see. And this charger puts out two amps, so it can take a little bit longer, uh, roughly six hours if your battery is completely depleted, just because it is such a high capacity battery at 672 watt hours. So you know, keep that in mind. But they do have three locking positions for the key. So you can leave this battery on and lock it and disable the, the display. That's something neat. So there are three positions, unlocked to slide it off, locked, but on the bike, and locked and active. So right now we're in locked and active. The display is ready for us. And so is the little USB charging port down here. I love this thing. It's a full-size USB type A. So it's probably gonna work with all your accessories and stuff. You could put a phone mount and Rad actually sells one. You could put lights, maybe a music player or something like that. They sell a bunch of cool accessories like the phone mount, but they also have a suspension seat post. So if you have a sensitive back and neck, it's just gonna take the edge off, which would be nice on this kind of terrain where it's a little bit rockier. It really pairs nicely with that front fork. It does cost a little bit extra. You know, same thing with all the racks and stuff. The rear rack is great because it, it's, it, it's compatible with the Yep Child seat. It has the window, but it's also compatible with the side clamping version. So I feel like they've done a good job just, just making this bike like ready for anything. Um, so I might hop on. I think I've, you know, I've gone around. There's a lot to say about these bikes. It's really cool to see them back to back like this and to be able to look at the colors and, and enjoy riding them around and, and trying them out. Um, yeah, I also want to call out that they've got this Rad Mini and this is the European version. It's, it's got a little bit of a higher stand over height. The smaller wheels actually give it a, a mechanical advantage for, for riding and it folds and it stows nicely. So, you know, maybe you're traveling a lot or you live in a loft and there's just not a lot of room. You can put it in the closet. It's cool to have options like that. And then the batteries are interchangeable between all of them. So if you're a family, you can, you know, loan the batteries or maybe put it in your rack and go for an extra long ride. Yeah, they've just, they've really nailed it. Okay, so here's the display. We've got a charge level indicator at the top, five bars. It'd be nice if there were 10 or maybe a percentage readout, it'd be more precise. Odometer, and if I press the mode button, it goes to trip distance. And then down here we have current speed. If I hold the up arrow, it goes to average speed. And then max speed. Down here we have pedal assist. It starts in one, and the walk mode kind of thing is available. If we go to zero, nothing's really available. It's just like a bicycle with a screen with a USB charging port and lights. So still not bad. But if we go up to one, we're gonna get that nice, subtle, really easy 50 watts. That's what I was saying before. And we, we go up to level two, we get 100, 150, and then 250 all the way at five. So a lot of really good feedback here. The lights you hold up in mode to activate, walk mode you hold down. And I think that's kind of it. There are a couple more settings. If you hold up and down, you can go and adjust the backlight brightness of this display, which is cool because sometimes at, at night, as it's getting to be evening here, this could be a little too bright for some people. So it's nice that you can kind of turn it down. Um, I think that's about it. The display does not remove, but it does swivel a little bit if you're getting some glare. I like that the saddle matches the grips in the brown and they've got the, the handle. Everything's black on the black bike, so they, you know they kind of they color matched it. This is faux leather, so you know if you're sensitive about animals and stuff like that, I feel like they they checked a lot of the boxes here. Um, yeah, I might just hop on this thing and go for a little ride. I'm at the highest level of assist, so I'll just leave it there. And I'm in a middle gear, so should work just fine. There we go cruising up the path. You can actually start to see the light lighting up our pathway with those trees down there. This is no hand shot. It's a pretty stable bike. And I have lowered the tire pressure just a little bit to make it more comfortable. I only weigh 135 pounds. So for me, going over the rocks and stuff, I want it to feel really smooth if possible. Do some gear shifting here. Beautiful, one-handed braking, no problem. So even though it's a bit of a heavier bike, this, most of these bikes are heavy. Like I think it's 67 pounds for the Rad Mini. This one's 71.5. It's the heaviest because they kind of had to reinforce that frame, make it extra stiff. 
And I've done some tests, you know, trying to shake this thing around and see if there's any speed wobble. And it, it really rides well, it's really smooth. That could change a little bit if you have racks and stuff. But I get on some bikes where, you know, the, the weight is too far back and it just wobbles and it's not very, not very stable. So I feel like Rad has done a good job engineering this bike. Okay guys, we're gonna go for a little ride. You can check out that 42 tooth chainring in action. Listen for the motor, right? See how quickly it starts and stops when I, when I pedal. Um, I'll switch to the gears a little bit and everything and just get some fun shots. Good to do the, the brake test. I have noticed sometimes there's a little bit of a squeak. I've also noticed that uh, if I'm in a high gear, the chain bounces around a lot more and you kind of hear it sometimes even banging on that, that guide. But otherwise, you know, it's pretty solid, especially without any accessories. And these fenders, plastic, they're not gonna rust the way that uh, maybe steel would. They're a little bit lighter than aluminum and more durable. You know, that you could get some vibration sounds like that, but it's not too bad. And go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually climbs pretty well, like going up the up the rocks and stuff. It's still pretty zippy. And when you're climbing and you're off-road, having that 25 kilometer per hour cutoff is is more than enough I, I find myself going like 15 you know, 10 kilometers per hour just to try to be safe and the tires and everything feeling feeling very like stable and that's important especially if you aren't like an actual mountain biker and there's the light kind of see the beam there on the side of the bank nice guys I think that's about it enjoying the sunset the end of a fun day riding bikes for the full written review on any of these bikes i'm, I'm kind of reviewing all of them i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com i've got a pretty cool tool so you can take the rad rhino step through and compare it to the high step and look at the different weight there's really not a whole lot difference besides the frames i should point out that this has a taller steer tube and fewer spacers or this one has a shorter steer tube and a lot more spacers so the geometry ends up being very similar the minimum saddle height's actually fairly close this one just has a lower standover height and the bottle cage bosses are right there on the on the down tube instead of way down here under the down tube not quite as accessible and then we don't have any bottle cage bosses on the little rad mini so that's one of the trade-offs you can go through check them out and everything i measure this all by hand i do my best but i welcome your feedback and suggestions and requests uh love you guys have fun out there we'll see you next time